Okay. Hey, what's happening? Um, gotta have my water. So, um, this is obviously not a live stream, and that's okay. Not everything has to be a live stream. I, uh, <clears throat> as uh, some of you may know, that have been following along the live streams and stuff for the last since May, I guess. Um, I had the super secret project going on that ended up maybe not being so so secret toward the end, but um, anyway. Um, so I wanted to take some time to talk about that and talk about why it was kind of a secret and what was going on and, and all that and what it was all about. So what it was all about is this airframe right here. Um, and what's important about this airframe right here is this is my <clears throat> niece's husband's, um, my niece's husband's father was killed in this airframe in Spain in 1988. So, um, so as you can imagine, that's what that project was was all about. It's it's a it's an interesting. Uh, a sad story but an interesting story and in that he, dad didn't even know mom was um, pregnant and that uh, he's the youngest of three and is named after his father um, so I thought it was an appro I thought it was an appropriate tribute build, and he has some of his dad's memorabilia, and he didn't really know about it. My niece knew about it, um, so that was that's where it all came from. So, with that said, let's uh, let's take a moment here and um, look at some of the things that. Uh, Oh, some of the documentation and stuff, and I'll just I'm just gonna ramble about this, but but the the main thing I want you to take away from this is this is a great way to use your hobby in a positive way, I guess, and 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 to get out there and not just you know stay down here in our basement workshops and and never go out and see the light of day and and actually. Uh, I've said this before, and I always this is kind of my thing: is you're you're handing somebody a piece of their personal history. You're handing them a piece of their youth back. Um, in this case, you're handing um, somebody a a link back to their father. Um, so, I, I think these things are really important, um, and I really enjoy doing them. And if I could figure out a way to make a living doing this, I would. <laughs> um, but uh, so anyway, moving on. So I'm going to just uh, um, I'm, I'm on the F16.net website, F-16.net website. You can see that up here. Um, <clears throat> this is a great site. They have lots of information. Not only on the 16, but the 22, and and they they have um, uh, a couple of memorial pages. They have a page on the F35 here too, and whatnot. I don't want to get too off track here, but they have patches and photos. They have all kinds of cool stuff. So um, this here is the tribute to the fallen list. There's also a remembrance list. Um, the difference is, is these are people that died um, in service. Um, and it's all operators. It includes all operators of the F-16. So, um, and they're all chronological. So I know this is 1988. And where are you? Where are you? There's camp. Okay. So this is who we're dealing with here is Lieutenant Colonel David F. Schantz. 
And this takes you to a, like a memory book page where people can have, can leave comments about, about the person. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so this is a really cool site. It's been a long, it's been up for a long time. You can tell just by the design, but, uh, but what is also cool is you can look up aircraft by serial number. And so by looking at the, the, the data on here on this site, I was able to track down the tail number and track down you know, these little aircraft histories. So this aircraft was only four years old. It wasn't even four years old. It was a Block 15. Um, it says here, crash near Madrid. Pilot Lieutenant Colonel David F. Schatz, fortunately killed in a mishap. Um, I don't know what happened. Um, all I know is, is it was a training flight and he took off to go out and I guess be the aggressor or whatever in the training flight and and dropped off the radar. Um, so that, that's really all I know. And that's not really important. But anyway. So, you know, these active, active um, MSH. I don't know what that missing, I guess. Oh, involved in mishap. Okay. And then written off January 13th, 1988. Anyway, so, and then it gives you a photo that you can work from. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the aircraft I built is really 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 close to this but it there's some minor details that are different um, one of them being this national insignia um, is a reverse of what i did um, <clears throat> because i was working with what i had and, and it's that simple and and another thing you know speaking on that right now is is don't think that when you're doing something like this, it has to be perfect because it doesn't have to be perfect. You know that old adage, just the thought that counts? That definitely applies here. Um, I haven't had anybody beat me up about having some detail incorrect. Um, that's not saying I don't try and make them right, but you know, you got you gotta draw the lines in some places. So, um, so there's the, and that's obviously the background on the video. Um, so that said, I'm going to, um, let's just walk through the photos here that, uh, I obviously have on Google photos. So I use the Hasegawa kit. I think I actually used like three Hasegawa kits because, um, some of them have the clear, Canopy pieces, some have the smoked one, some have both. Somehow I lost a tail cone for one kit. Yada, yada, yada. Lots of different things didn't go right. Um, also, I'm sure that the instrument panel is not correct for a Block 15. I think this is a block five, block 10 instrument panel. Um, again, it's just one of those things that they're not, you know, who cares? They're not going to care. Um, so, so there's that. Um, and just progress picks as it went along. Um, bench picks. And so here's my um, my standard, pretty much standard cockpit process. So I paint the gray, I go in, I paint the black, and then I use the white pencil to hit all the raised areas. And I'll go in with a... a you know, the paintbrush with red or 
or something a little bit just to kind of get some color in there um, something to really realize when you're doing something like this is that this is just stuff the overall presentation is really what's important and and the the people receiving this this isn't going to be really they're not going to be worried about whether the colors are right and whether you got the right ejection seat or whether the scales offer or any of that stuff um it's just it's not important to them right i mean obviously for obvious reasons so um, some more shots where I put the green in for the CRTs and, and whatnot. Um, that looks pretty good. Not bad at all. I didn't have a any knowledge on the helmet, so I just did a white helmet. Um, and I just kind of played around with some stuff <clears throat> as it was going. <laughs> so I had to print the tail numbers. Um, and so I was trying to, to scale them correctly. I use um, um, Inkscape to make decals with. And I don't do it a lot, so I'm not really great at it. But so I was uh, just measuring the spacing here to make sure I was somewhat in the ballpark when I printed the thing. I was just checking the seam here, see what it looked like. This is a really good kit. It goes together really, really, really well. It's the 148 scale Hasegawa F16 series. Um, really, really, really good. I would not uh, use um, Silly Putty to mask the cockpit again. And the reason being is, is when it gets warm, it kind of deforms and leaks down into places you don't want it to go and you have to pull it out piece by piece. Um, which was doable, but wasn't fun. So Silly Putty to mask the cockpit like that, not recommended. Definitely not recommended. Um, so I used Vallejo Modeler on this, and if you watch the video series, you know I was really, really happy with it. I really liked it. There's a tissue in there, and here I think I used the Silly Putty again. Bad idea, don't mask with Silly Putty. At least not in, not in some place that's got detail and stuff in there, you're going to have to yank it out. It's probably fine for a pattern, but... And here's the other gray. I think the tail's just sitting up there. I ended up actually having to modify this pattern a few times because on this particular aircraft, it, it's actually back here. Um, so yeah, I had to change that. That changed quite a few times. I ended up having to repaint the nose because I painted the nose the wrong color the first time. <clears throat> um, And we're just going step by step here. Yeah, so here's after I repainted it. I painted it the light color, which was quote unquote normal. But I was wrong, so I had to re redo it. And we're just adding pieces here. And so this is some of his memorabilia. I wish I had had a flight helmet. Um, But I don't know, you know, this may have been his, well, these probably were his, his earlier helmets from his F4 days or something. But, um, so this is kind of cool that he's got these things. Um, to remember his dad by so this was decaling and yeah this decal is horribly thick this serial number decal back here um, again 
you know, and, and, and this is going to sound like I'm being lazy or whatever. And, and you could say that if you want to. But the fact is, is it's more, you know, getting it done and in their hands is more important than it being perfect. If I had more time, um, I certainly would have liked to have sourced a thinner decal paper. Um, or if I had a laser printer, which I don't. Um, and the decals that are on here are from a couple of different sheets. Um, so this is a lot of mix and match and of different eras. And some of these are off an F-16C sheet. But, you know, this is what we do as modelers, right? We rob Peter to pay Paul. But we got it done. You can see where this pattern, I modified this pattern clear back to here. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, and that, that actually ended up laying down. This sucked. Um, and I didn't actually realize it until it was pretty much too late. Um, you know, it's one of those things you go back and you're like, ah, I wish I would have saw that earlier. Well, I hadn't. Um, I, I didn't even, you know, when I was taking these pictures, I don't think I really even noticed it. But again, it's, it's okay. Um, and there it is, everything stuck on it. And I'm just, my list of, my to-do list and whatnot. Um, and there it is sitting on its legs. And then after the flat coat and everything, so these are the final photos. Um, I don't know what the configuration was. I put the AIM 9s on there. I just did it clean with the AIM 9s because the 16 looks sweet like that you know and if you're old enough to have, uh, remember uh, I remember you know in high school reading the um, what was that Air and Space Weekly or whatever it was Aviation Week Technology or whatever that magazine was it, <clears throat> and then when they were doing the trials and stuff and the photos and stuff in there and anyway it's a uh, just a pretty pretty airframe when it's clean um, so that's that's what I did with it. And this kid's straight out of the box. I mean, I did not do anything extra. Um, again, no real reason to. It's, uh, it's a real good kit. Looks good. Okay, so here's the display case. So... <clears throat> Uh, display case that was big enough to put this thing in was about a hundred dollars, and this was a no budget project. <laughs> so, um, what I ended up doing was I bought this fifteen dollar fish tank at Walmart and flipped it upside down on a quarter inch piece of plywood. A finished plywood and then I put some feet on it so <clears throat> there's a lip on this black plastic edge of the fish tank and so it just sits on top of the the plywood and as you can see that's a pretty the sizing is almost exact other than the height and the height really didn't bother me because the height um, allows you to look at it without the 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 top corner getting in your field of view the um, if you ever notice you look at some display cases and they're just tall enough to clear the highest part of the model which is fine except usually you end up with that corner edge and you're viewing right in the middle of your view at, at, at a normal or a typical viewing angle and so I mean I'm not gonna say that was planned but 
it was definitely I noticed it right off the bat like wow this works really good so taller is better um, and it's not really cleaned up right here but I was just um, I had it sitting on one of my display cases so transport this is always a problem so what I did here this was actually a piece of packing foam out of a printer or something that's pretty much hollow on the back side so I I just punched a hole in it for the landing gear to go through for the, this you know I put a hole here for the intake and the landing gear and stuff and then this these cutouts here are for the the nose pedo and for the the pedo that's hanging off the the starboard side just below the cockpit so i had to carve those areas out so those would get broken uh, well, as you can see here so here's that one pedo here that and this worked fantastic um it, it worked great it couldn't have worked better had no issues it, you know, made the five hour trip in the car um, without issue. So, um, so yeah, so that's the last, is that the last photo? That's the last photo. So, um, again, what I really want to stress here is this is, something that's fun and I and I if you're inclined to do something to like this I highly 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 encourage it um, I can't um, I can't stress enough how how uh, How much I think this is a, something like this is a worthwhile thing to do. Anyway, I, I wanted to 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 just kind of go through this project, let everybody know what it was, what it was all about, why it was kind of a secret. Um, I didn't want my <clears throat> I didn't want David to see it on YouTube or on Facebook or something and go, you know, and he didn't he didn't know about it so. So yeah, so there we go. So as usual, take care of the people you love, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.